morning, Strasburg United Methodist Church and all others who are watching us today as we celebrate another week of worship, socially separated from one another during this coronavirus pandemic. Today is Sunday, April 19th, 2020, and it is the first Sunday after Easter, and I am so happy that you were able to join us today. For those of you who are seeking a live connection, at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning, we will be gathering by Zoom conference software to meet with one another and talk to one another and see each other's faces and offer prayers for each other and our community. And if you'd like to join in those Zoom conferencing, you may uh, check out our link on Facebook under Strasburg United Methodist Church, and it will show you the, the code that you need to use to sign in or the link that you could press to get your PC connected or your phone connected. And uh, it is important that you have a camera or a microphone that you can connect. And if you don't have access to either one of those things, there is a 1-800 number that you can call and listen in and speak up when you need to. So we encourage you to do that as we continue to try to be the church in a new and different way as we are in the midst of pandemic. I wanna start off today with uh, an opening prayer. And you will notice this uh, prayer, uh, probably scrolling across your screen or popping up on your screen, and you can pray with us today. God of signs and wonders, you have revealed to us that Jesus Christ is your Son and our Savior. Strengthen our faith that we may have life in Christ's name. Amen. Our first song, and actually only song today, is going to be a song called You Were the Seed. It is found on page 583 of the United Methodist Hymnal. And uh, if you have that at home, you're welcome to sing along. Otherwise, please enjoy the music and the song that we're singing today. You are the seed that will grow a new sprout. You're the star that will shine in the you are the yeast and a small grain of salt, a beacon to glow in the dark. You are the dawn that will bring a new day, you're the wheat that will bear golden grain. You are a sting and a soft, gentle touch, my witness is where Right. 
Now, my friends, I ask that you join with me in a time of praying for our world and for others. There will be a little moment of silence for you, for you to offer your own prayers to God before we conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Resurrecting God, in a doubting world, keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for the church universal. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit that we may honor and pass on the great inheritance we have received. Keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for Mother Earth that we may touch her wounds with healing care and love. Keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for the whole world its nations, its leaders, and its people, that your wisdom and peace may prevail. Keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for all those in need, the suffering, the oppressed, the ill, the dying, and all those who care for them. Keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. Keep us in faith that we may have life. Blessed are you, O God, who through Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, and in the community of the Holy Spirit, gives us an inheritance that is imperishable and unfading. And Lord, as your people, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 19 through 31. It continues on with the lesson we heard last week from John chapter 20, which was the story of Mary Magdalene and Peter and the other disciple finding the empty tomb and all that Mary was asked to do as she was asked to continue to share that message of Easter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Rejoice and receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand and his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I shared this story a few years ago, but I believe we should hear it again in the midst of the coronavirus. It was a late August Sunday in Chicago. The people of LaSalle Street Church went to church like they did every other Sunday. It's probably no different from how many of us usually get ready for church in the heat of August, especially if we were able to meet with one another. Some people were running late. Some were trying to find clean clothes for the kids. Others were waiting for a ride, grateful for when somebody picked them up and brought them to worship. They weren't expecting anything surprising that day. But several hours later, everyone who attended were perplexed, excited, and nervous about what happened in that worship service that day. Each of them had been given a check for $500 accompanied by a one-sentence instruction on what to do with the money, do good in the world. One member of the congregation, Dan, thought about that $500 for a very long time, and after a few weeks of reflecting on how to use that check, Dan felt compelled to start giving the money away, $20 at a time, to the people he knew in need. Now, he began wandering the streets of his community, and two hours later, he still had that $20 in that pocket. Dan came across a daycare center bearing this sign, nap time, 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m., please do not ring the bell. Ring quietly, or not quietly. Now, the middle-aged woman who opened the door at Dan's gentle knocking had spit up on her shoulder, and her weary way, way suggested she needed a nap just as much as the kids. And, and Dan shared with her why he had come that day, $20 bill in hand and saying, I thought that maybe you would know of someone among the parents of these children who might need this. The woman sized him up for a second and said, nah, I don't know anybody like that. Determined. Dan continued to hold that $20 bill out, insisting that he didn't want anything in return, that he wasn't selling anything, and that he just wanted the money to do some good. Now let's pause and think about that for a moment. Can you imagine a stranger coming up to you now? Probably not. <laughs> With a $20 bill in his hand, you probably won't want to take it. You're wondering, do they have the coronavirus? Am I going to get sick? But imagine... $20 appeared in your bank account. You weren't expecting it. What would you do with it? 
I'll tell you what I would probably do. If someone approached me on the, on the street with $20 in their hand saying they wanted to give it to me, I would probably close that door as fast as I could. We know that nothing in life comes for free, especially money. And there's something weird about somebody telling you that they're going to do something good for you and they don't expect anything in return. Why would anybody do that? We teach our children not to take candy from strangers. So why would we think it's okay to take money from strangers? I'm just going to say here that our, our relationship with money and with people is complicated. Just think of some of the things we say about money. Easy come, easy go. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Our history and experience in this world reveals to us that when it comes to a transaction, there is always someone who wins and somebody who loses. So it's not surprising to me that this woman at the daycare tried to close the door on Dan as soon as he started spouting off some nonsense about wanting to do good in this world. How often do we allow ourselves to be closed off to generosity? We create space between us around giving and receiving, and especially around money. Many of us have grown up with the belief that we earn what we get and that we shouldn't receive handouts. That people who receive are somehow greedy or lazy or undeserving. Today, Today, we continue our story of Easter. We heard last week about how Mary and Peter and John discovered the empty tomb. We also heard how, how Jesus revealed himself to Mary and, and she ran and told the other disciples. Today, we hear those disciples encounter a risen Lord, all except Thomas. And then a week later, after Thomas says he won't believe until he puts his hand on the wounds, Jesus appears, and Thomas has his doubts disappear. And Jesus says to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We live in a world full of doubt. There are many who doubt that Jesus is who he says he is. There are many who doubt that God exists or that there is anything beyond these years that we live. There are those who doubt the church, especially as some pastors put their parishioners at risk by ignoring social distancing at this time. And we think they do it in pursuit of fame and money and power. We look around at the horrible way we treat each other in this world, and we use that as proof that there is no God because there is evil. There is no God. Now, there are some Christians who have tried hard to speak the language of science and math and sociology and psychology to prove that God exists. And there have been scientific studies even that have tried to find the weight of the soul. There have been people who have looked at genetics and, and tried to prove that those of us who go to church are just plain different from everybody else. There are those who use archaeology and textbooks and shovels to find the historical Jesus, trying to prove that everything that the Bible says can be backed up with modern scientific methods. The truth is, I have never been persuaded by the evidence for or against God. I'm not so sure that we will ever have a way to draw an accurate picture of Jesus. We will never know the whole of his life, only what the scriptures have told us. And maybe, and maybe if you're like me, you've realized that there will be some, some people in this world who will never be convinced that God exists. And you know, the question that comes up for us is the same question that that daycare worker on that Chicago street in a late September was also thinking. Can I trust what I'm being told? Can I trust when somebody tells me that there is a gift that can bring a little good to this world. Now the stakes for us as Christians are more than just $20 offered 
to a tired childcare worker. In fact, the gift that we are offered is so much bigger. You see, Easter demonstrated that we are given the gift of eternity and a gift of healthy relationships and a new kingdom on earth and in heaven. We are given the gift of faith and something beyond ourselves in our lifetime. We are given a gift of a future without tears and pain and grief and anger. And as Christians, we are given the simple instruction with that gift to do good in the world. Reverend Laura Truax, she's the pastor of LaSalle Street, and Amela Campbell, and she's a member at that same church who served on that church's leadership council. And they both wrote a book about their experiment in extreme generosity. In their book, Love Let Go, Radical Generosity for the Real World, they explained that their church had invested in property many years before with three other congregations to provide low-income housing for their community. Now, that project had then eventually been sold, and each congregation received a gift of $1.6 million. Actually, it wasn't even a gift. It was what they earned off of the sale of that property. And as the leadership of LaSalle Street wrestled with what to do with that great sum of money, well, they knew they had to repair the church. They, they were an aging congregation with all the concerns that went with that reality. But Truex and Campbell explained that a wild idea emerged in their leadership. Why not take 10% of what they were getting, so about $160,000, and share it? Churches are always asking for money. Why not give the first 10% to their congregation and ask them to do whatever they thought God wanted them to do with it? What a surprising example of grace and freedom that it would show to the world. What if we showed the congregation that we trusted them to do good with the gifts that they never sought nor expected to receive in the first place? Wouldn't that be the same thing that God did for us when he places the whole world in the hands of men and women who are given free will to believe or not believe and to do good or not do good? What if this entire exercise of tithing to the people could become a metaphor for what God does for us every single day? We would be putting and pointing to that reality that every one of us has something far more valuable than money. And that daily we are asked to do something good with it. You see, God loves us so much that he has given us a great gift, much more valuable than a $20 bill or a $500 check. God has given us the gift of love come down in the person of Jesus Christ, born to a poor couple, raised as a carpenter, and who only taught and healed for three years before his countrymen asked for him to be put to death. But you know what? Much more than that, God changed the rules. God raised Jesus from the dead. God defeated the anger and bitterness and this idea of winners and losers, these rules that we have in this world. God revealed to us that we can be loved and that we can love without losing anything. So after Dan, remember Dan? After Dan pleaded with the woman at the child care center, she kept the door open. She listened to Dan, leaning in as he repeated his purpose. He only wanted to give money to someone who could use it. And surely she knew a family in need. And she hesitated. And she paused. And silence filled the seconds as the door hung open. And finally the woman said, Can I keep it? And use it on myself? It wasn't the response that Dan expected. And he asked, well, are you really the person who needs it the most? And she responded, well, yes, I believe I am. So Dan leaned in 
and put that $20 in her hand. She blessed him and called him an angel, saying she never thought that she would ever meet an angel. With tears in his eyes, Dan blessed her back and walked home with an empty pocket. Now I wish I could give you a check for $500. Even a gift of $20 would do some good in this world, wouldn't it? And we would certainly be talked about as a church. But I don't have a gift of money to share with you from our church. But you know, many of you received a stimulus check this week from the U.S. government. Money that you were not expecting. Now, if you're somebody who is deep in debt, or if you're somebody who has lost their job, this is a wonderful thing for you to have at this moment. You have a little bit of breathing room before you have to worry about the next stress or anxiety. Or maybe you're one of the 78% of Americans who do not even have $500 as an emergency fund. Well, this is a great way to get that going and get it started in the half. Now, I'm not going to direct what I'm going to say next to any of you who needs the money to get by. I don't begrudge you that. I think you should take that $1,200 or $2,400 or $2,900 or $3,400, however big your family is and whatever you receive. Take that and use it for what you need to do to make sure you get yourself out of debt or to make sure that you are able to pay the bills this month or to help you get through those uh, medical needs, whatever it is that you need. Now, I'm going to speak to everybody out there who received that government stimulus check and who, are, who is still fully employed or, or, or is on a generous fixed income in retirement and you really didn't need that money. It was an unexpected gift. Take a look at our community and see where the greatest need is right now and help out an organization that is doing good. The free clinic in Woodstock needs some financial support to help all those who are without health insurance. Compassion Covered provides supplemental food to the neediest in our community. Strasburg Local Relief provides modest financial relief to those in need, and that basically comes from each of the four main churches in our community and some other funds that have come from our individuals. Shenandoah Alliance for Shelter provides utility grants as well as rapid rehousing to those who need a home. Family Promise helps homeless families. Response helps women and families caught up in domestic abuse. The Pregnancy Center and Planned Parenthood provide resources for reproductive health. These are just a few of the organizations that are doing good in our community who will be needing our financial support, especially in the next few months as the unemployment rate goes up, as our economy continues to be unbalanced, as people try to seek out what is next. Or maybe you just need to help somebody directly. And I'd say talk to the principals at one of our schools, at the elementary or the middle school or the high school. See if there is a family who is in direct need. Speak to your pastor and see if they have heard of anybody who needs. Our church, through our missions committee, will be partnering with Compassion Covered to provide food vouchers at local restaurants to help those who might need, meal, need meals at this time. And if you'd like to be a part of that, you can send a check into our church and write meal voucher on it. And we'll make sure that it's not spent on our budget, but spent on the needs that we have. If you received $1,200, think about giving just $120 away. Don't, don't worry about the whole thing unless you feel called to give it all. Think about all the good that could be accomplished with six $20 bills. If everyone just gave a little bit away to help our community and to help our neighbors. Finally, remember this. Take this gift of Easter and do good in the world. Amen.